carburetors in general are confusing for most people. Edelbrock carburetors are just flat out not understood by many. So today we're going to take a look at what makes these carburetors great and a few things that make them bad and, well, downright ugly. So let's get right to it. So let's go through all the good things about this carburetor. And there's a lot of them, so I'm going to fly through these as quick as possible. And really the first one is adjustability. These carburetors have a lot of adjustability in it. And what that means is it's able to be tuned to address the situations that you're having for each individual application. If you need a little less fuel on the primary side, you can do that very simply. If you need to pull the secondaries in a little bit quicker, you can do that very easily. If you're having issues with uh, drivability, off idle, all of those are very easily corrected. Now they're not understood a lot of times, and that's one of the things that we'll get to in here in just a minute, but the carburetor has all those provisions on there. And if you're well enough versed with it, or if you watch my videos, you'll understand how to tune these carburetors. And once you really get into it, you'll find out that they're not that complicated. They are fairly simple. You just have to be determined or give yourself a process and not give up on it. Follow the steps within the process, and it's very, very simple. So... The adjustability side in this is huge because for this level of street carburetor, there's really not any other carburetor on the market that gives you that. Uh, that adjustability does promote fuel economy. If you're not just dumping a lot of fuel into the engine for the demand, then it's going to sip fuel instead of guzzle it. And I know it doesn't sound that important, but really when you're talking about a street engine that doesn't really need an aggressive shot of fuel every single time you hit the throttle, then it's a big benefit to it. Now there's also a simplicity that comes to that. And with all of that adjustability that's in there, it is much, much simpler to attune and adjust than say a factory carburetor. And I'm going to compare it to a Quadrajet, which they are way overcomplicated. And I understand why the OE did it because they wanted to give the user all of those things in a, off the showroom floor type drivability. Well, the Edelbrock addresses quite a few of those, but it's not nearly as complicated. Now, the Quadrajet is always going to be a very, very fun, very, very good carburetor, but it takes a long time to learn how to adjust those and a long time to understand how all the pieces kind of fit together and how to give yourself a process to troubleshoot. Now, some of the physical things about this carburetor, there's no gaskets below the fuel level in the carburetor. That's a huge benefit on a street car. If you're not leaking fuel all over the place, if the thing sits for three weeks and gaskets tend to dry out, ethanol evaporates out of fuel uh, very quickly. So it, it tends to, uh, you know, play a lot of havoc with seals and, and gaskets and materials. None of those things matter in the Edelbrock carburetor. There's no gaskets below the fuel level, and that's a a big benefit there's you don't have a lot of the leaking situations that you have with other brands of carburetor the ports on the front side of the carburetor for ported and manifold vacuum for the distributor those are very handy to have right on the front side of the carburetor instead of bouncing back and forth from sides whatever makes it very very easy to, to get to the pcv uh, port up front is a nice one because most of them will attach right to a valve cover and I guess depending on where the carburetor is placed but typically we're talking about a single four setup here uh, it makes it very easy to run the PCV line over to start pulling that out of the, the crankcase. Now, if you have the newer AVS uh, Thunder Series or the AVS 2 style carburetor, there's a nice simplicity there to learn how to adjust the opening of the secondaries. If you need it to come a little bit quicker or a little bit later, that is given to you right there. There's no other tools that you need other than just a couple of screwdriver, a screwdriver and a, a Torx bit. Uh, and that's it. So all of that can be done on your own. The AVS-2 with the annular discharge primaries, that has been one of the singular best things that Edelbrock has 
probably put a significant investment into to redesign that carburetor on the inside to get the fuel flow right so the av you can take advantage of that annular style primary and really smooths out drivability it really helps making that bog that people complain about with Edelbrock carburetors really makes it much more simple to tune big big benefit to that carburetor the tuning chart the tuning chart that comes within you know with that carburetor book in here no other carb manufacturer gives you that level of detail if you're having this problem with fuel delivery this is exactly how you fix it beautiful piece and we've explained that how to read that tuning chart and again once you understand it and someone explains it to you like i do in that video it's a wonderful tuning tool it just makes the drivability of these carburetors that much better there is an endless supply of local support and by by that i mean most o'reilly stores will carry a few rods and jets and they have calibration kits if they don't have the calibration kit there they're usually within their system and usually can have them that day uh, or next day so Depending on where you live in the country, that's a really nice deal to, to have rods and jets available to you if you're doing in the tuning process and you haven't didn't buy the calibration kit along with it. Edelbrock support is one of the best in the industry, hands down. I cannot tell you how many times I've sent people there that are missing a gasket or they were rebuilding the carburetor and jacked something up and, and lost the check ball out of the you know, out, out of the, the squirter and, and Edelbrock will send them the ball and the weight and the gasket and, you know, mail it out to them fairly quickly. That's a huge benefit. Again, very few other carburetor companies give you that level of service and support. And Edelbrock has always done that. They've always been very, very helpful. All you got to do is call them and tell them, hey, look, I'm having some trouble. Uh, I'm... I, I took this carburetor apart three months ago. It sat on my workbench and I'm missing one of the connecting rods from the, you know, from the, uh, accelerator to the, uh, to the, uh, accelerator pump. They'll send you that rod and the clips to attach it. No charge. They just throw it in the mail. A huge benefit. I can't even begin to tell you how awesome that support is. And that's a big part of it. I mean, it's one of the reasons why this carburetor is loved so much by so many people is, their support, hands down, is is world class. There, there. That's the definition of world class, right there. And I guess just being very well designed overall to deliver the right amount of fuel at the right time in the right amount is a big benefit to this carburetor. I absolutely love these for a street application, and everything is is specific. You know, we've talked about this before, where. You know, there's no one camshaft that's best for a FE Ford engine. That's why manufacturers have dozens of camshaft profiles to fit it, depending on what your need is. And the Edelbrock carburetor is no different. If you have the need and this carburetor fits into that need, it is it will answer every problem that you have. If you're trying to shoehorn it into something else, well, that's where we're going to get into some of the other stuff. But the carburetor is not really to blame in some of these. In others, they are. And let's talk, talk about those right now. Now that we talked about the good, well, let's talk about the bad. Now, anything that's common around all carburetors, we won't talk be talking about. Heat soak, flooding problems, dirty fuel, not verifying timing when adjusting and making you know carburetor changes. None of these things are Edelbrock specific. We also won't cover lack of tuning. This is a common thing among folks in carburetors. They just assume that you can pull it out of the box if it idles, drives okay stomp on the on the gas and it doesn't bog or hesitate must be good and it's wrong it's dead wrong it's not it's not right at all that's why you tune to get the most out of what's in that carburetor a carburetor is an analog piece it has no idea what it's going to be put on and yeah it can be tuned a little bit for a fairly broad scope of what it could go on but it's not even close trust me i've tuned thousands of carburetors over the years and there's never been a single one where i've pulled it out of the box and hey lo and behold the tune that came from the factory is perfect so let's talk about the things that are specifically bad about the edelbrock carburetor and really the first one is just the limited amount of power that it will support now the world's changed a lot since the first 
carburetor was designed and then the redesign of the Edelbrock came out. And back then, a 400 horsepower uh, engine on a streetcar 20, 25 years ago was a big number. Uh, and today, those numbers have, are, have gotten bigger and that crowd that still has a you know, 250, 300, 400 horse engine have gotten smaller. Um, cars and trucks rolling off the assembly line today from the factory have a bigger number than that. So it's a it's it's an issue. I mean, the Edelbrock carburetor didn't really follow along with the growing horsepower de- demand and support more power on those street engines that are, you know, that are making the big power today. You know, it still addresses that specific crowd that has a need for a carburetor for lower horsepower use. But, you know, in Edelbrock's defense, spending a significant amount of money to address these things in in R&D time and testing and tuning and new tooling and staff time and, you know, re working all those things when you, they come across problems in a category that's slowly dying out just doesn't make sense. The, the cost isn't worth the diminishing return. So um, the crowd isn't there to support it. So it's understandable, but uh, the limited power is certainly an issue. Now, the other thing about the Edelbrock carburetor is it is slightly more complicated to tune. There's more pieces. There's a few more adjustments on there that are, are a little different looking than than the Holly. And I think that confuses a lot of people, even though the tuning charts out there, um, there's lots of resources online. Certainly, I hope my channel is a good resource for that as well. Uh, it's just a little more complicated. Anything that's complicated kind of terrifies people, sends them running in the other direction. Now, it's not near as complicated as the Q-Jet that we talked about earlier, but it does require a little bit more understanding to tune it properly. Um, Holly double pumpers on the other side, you know, they dump a massive amount of fuel kind of mindlessly. And when you dump that much fuel, it's going to cover up a lot of sins. And the Edelbrock just doesn't do that very well. So it does take somebody that's that's willing to be a little more patient and, and take a little bit slower uh, time to, to get it tuned and dialed in right. Now, another bad part about this carburetor is the accelerator pump. It's just, there's, I wish there was a better option there for a bigger shot of fuel on the primary side and then figure out metering on the secondary side. Now on the accelerator pump that's in the carburetors today, the top and the middle hole are really all I use. The bottom one is just too lean in most cases. It's just, there's no reason to use it. So maybe a redesign with a bigger barrel to deliver a a bigger shot of fuel would, would be good, but, uh, you'd give up a little bit of something there, possibly a little bit more fuel economy. But what you would address is you would address that little bit of hesitation that you sometimes get uh, when you're off idle cruising and then you roll into the throttle hard to, to pass somebody or, or do whatever. And that little hesitation would cure that a little bit, I think with the bigger accelerator pump. But when you go down that rabbit hole, I don't know if there's an, enough uh, justification in tooling and all the costs to do that, to make that a good change. But one thing we need to understand here is one of the reasons why this is a little bit complicated on the tuning side is when this carburetor was designed, ethanol was not part of the equation and ethanol fuel requires more to support the same amount of power. Again, that's why it makes the accelerator pump a little bit of a bad spot of this carburetor. We talked about the good and the bad, and well, we have to talk about the ugly, and there's really only one thing about this carburetor that's very, very ugly and hard to tune out of, almost impossible, and that is making hard left-hand turns. Now, hard right-hand turns aren't that much of an issue, and I'm going to show you the reason why I think that is in here in just a quick second, but... If we look at the carburetor from the top down, I added some food coloring and some water and put it in here so we can take a look at it. When you make a hard left-hand turn with this carburetor, what you are doing is you are pushing all of that fuel to the outside of the carburetor. And what that does is it uncovers the metering jet on that side. On the other side, it actually pushes more fuel on top of the jet and you don't have that starvation issue. But on a left-hand turn, you uncover that jet enough that you can get some bog and hesitation. Now I've experienced it at 
20, 30, 40 miles per hour. But I think most people will tell you that it's at 30 to 50 mile per hour range that if you're making a hard left hand turn, um, you know, a wide sweeping turn around a curve uh, or something that's a little bit more sharp uh, that you're driving a little bit more aggressively on you can starve it for fuel. It does hesitate a little bit. Um, and you have to either maintain some RPM to get through it. Um, and you'll stumble your way through it, but there's really nothing you can do to tune yourself out of that. I've seen a lot of guys try a lot of different things with, with foam, uh, ways of trying to, to shroud that, to, to, cold fuel in that area but there's really no really good way to do it and the biggest reason why is you have to consider that the the metering rod goes through there so it's it's very very difficult to kind of hold fuel in that direction on the passenger side of the carburetor i don't think it's as much of an issue because that is typically where the fuel is being delivered from first and i think it just gets there a little bit quicker and i think i can't confirm this but i think it holds probably a little bit more fuel on that side or possibly hard right turns don't uncover that jet near as bad. Either way, it's an issue and, and it's one that just can't be fixed. There's really no way to correct it. Um, I wish there was, but again, you're asking the carburetor to do something it wasn't designed to do. But aggressive street driving is certainly, you know, part of it. And, uh, you know, if you're going to autocross it, well it would be a poor choice of carburetor for sure. So anyway, it's one to be uh, concerned about. It's one of, it's my biggest concern with this carburetor, but again, it, it's in very, very small situations and very, very limited amount of time of actual driving. So it doesn't come across very often, but when it does, it's, it's certainly irritating, uh, especially cause you can't fix it. You know, a carburetor is an analog piece. It does not know what it's going on, and we have to make the right choice. And there are enough choices out there in carburetor that we can find the right one to do the job we're asking it to do. When you try to cram something into a situation it can't handle, it isn't the fault of the carburetor. It's our fault for asking it to do something that it was never designed to do. So it's just like matching up pistons and cylinder heads and compression ratio and cam selection, intake manifolds. If you get all those pieces incorrect, it's not going to run right. So the carburetor is certainly a part of that. And understanding what its strengths are and what its weaknesses are should help you make a better decision when you're looking for a carburetor. So I hope that gave you a little bit more insight onto the Edelbrock carburetor. If you've got any questions about this one, please don't hesitate. Leave them down below. And I will certainly uh, love to answer any questions you got. And uh, we will catch you on the next video. We'll see you.